Hey, what's up, guys? So I was a Wall Street options market maker for four years, and I was a quantitative researcher after that. I want to share my opinion on how to price Bitcoin and other crypto assets. I see a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of grifters and there's people like this on YouTube and other places. And I just want to educate you guys on how things actually work. First thing I would say to you is that if you ever hear anyone confidently tell you that the price of Bitcoin is going up or the price of Bitcoin is going down and they're supremely confident, they're lying to you and they're trying to sell you something. So be very wary of them and take what they say with a grain of salt. Nobody knows where the future price of these asset classes are gonna go. If they knew, then they would state their case and that information would bake into the market and then that's where the new market price would be. That's how these things work. For example, when a dividend comes out of the stock, we know for a fact by rules and regulations that that dividend amount is gonna come out of the stock price. So when we price the options, for example, with mathematical certainty, we can reprice the options by removing the price of the dividend out of the option. And so when someone says, oh, the price of Bitcoin is going to be here in the future or there, if what they're saying is true for the reasons they say it's true, the price would just jump there immediately in that second that that information came out. Yet it doesn't. What does that tell you about the reputability of that information? It means that information is speculative at best and the way that information will impact the price of Bitcoin is speculative at best. And so most of these grifters online are simply taking speculations or repeating them back to you confidently. And that's that's the grift. I'll tell you how you should price Bitcoin and how you should think about these things and where the ultimate true source of the best information on Bitcoin exists. And it's free and it's right in front of you. You don't have to pay for a course for it. The best information on Bitcoin or any crypto or any asset class, in fact, is right in the market itself. For anyone who understands how to analyze markets, they know this. And it's because the price of a free-floating asset is always priced most efficiently based on where the most deep-pocketed people have pushed the price. So... If there are more buyers than sellers at any one moment, the price of it will go up because there's an asymmetry on the bid and the ask. Now, unless you're going to look at the different levels of the market and you have access to that kind of price information, there really isn't that much more information to extract from the underlying asset class. But where there's a heavy depth of information that I, I find few people are knowledgeable about is the options market. The options market has way more layers of information that tell you things about the underlying asset class. And so there are options to almost everything. There's options to the S&P 500 and individual equities like Apple. There's options to commodities like crude oil, wheat, corn. And there's options to Bitcoin and other crypto assets like Ethereum. And so what do the options markets tell us about these asset classes? Well, for one, let's start with the S&P 500. The S&P 500 has a volatility smile that's often described as a volatility smirk. It's shaped like a mirrored Nike check where out of the money puts are much higher than the out of money calls. This makes a lot of sense. The status quo is that everyone is working together and growing their company and earnings should slowly go up. They're using technology to improve the efficiency of their companies and all things being equal, earnings should go up. GDP should slowly grow across productive countries. And well, we're talking about the S&P, which is the United States. So there's a slow grind up, but these violent shocks down and the violent shocks down are basically surprises that are bad news that lower expectations for future earnings in companies. Tariffs, for example, this directly impacts earnings. I won't, I won't get into the politics of that and whether that long term that's good or bad for the economy because that's not what this video is about. But tariffs create a shock to the potential earnings of corporations and uncertainty around future tariffs and whether things will escalate increases volatility because volatility is uncertainty. It's basically future price uncertainty. That's why the shape of the vol smile for equities is shaped like that mirrored Nike check. It's expected to go up, all things being equal. And then here and there when bad news comes out, it has these shocks down where uncertainty and volatility of the, of the asset class goes up until that uncertainty starts to calm down and then it starts to grind back up again. And that's the general shape of U.S. equities. You see that in the smile and the at the money implied volatility where things are trading right now usually has implied volatility in the range of, say, 8 through 14, something like that. And 
basically that number is how much a person expects the market to move in a given year. And, and that makes sense, right? It's roughly like it probably moves like 10% a year on average. Of course, the range is wide. It can crash 50% or it can just be flat on the year. But that makes sense, right? And when you talk about commodities, which is another asset class, the false smile is shaped like a smirk, but the smirk is in the other direction. And the out-of-the-money calls are where they're the most expensive. It's because fear is to the upside. With equities, fear is to the downside. But with commodities, fear is to the upside. So what do I, what do I mean by that? What the market is scared of is a shock to the upside. So let's take crude oil, for example. People want the price of crude oil to be low. But if a war breaks out in the Middle East, the Suez Canal might be blocked. And it might be difficult to get oil to export out of the Middle East. And that'll, sh that'll shoot the prices of crude oil barrels up. Surprises and bad news that hurt the market cause the price of crude oil to go up, not down. And that's why the implied volatility and the uh, volatility smile is shaped the mirrored way of the S&P 500 volatility smile. Because the market knows and understands that. What about Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a perfectly symmetric volatility smile. It's U-shaped. When you compare that to S&P 500 and commodities, it's almost combining both. It means there's fear both to the upside and the downside, which is interesting, right? There's information there. It means that the most informed people in the market are both afraid that it's going to crash. And if it crashes, it could just completely free fall and keep crashing, or it can have this melt up. And if it goes up, it'll just keep soaring and just go absolutely vertical. And that is the level of uncertainty in the crypto market, where the most informed people in the market who push the market price, who push the price of the options up or down, they've settled on a U-shaped volatility smile, meaning that the market can both go up violently or go down violently. <laughs> and the at-the-money volatility which determines basically where the market thinks the average volatility is going to be is also very high as compared to, say, the S&P 500. So the market is inherently not confident about where the price is going to be at all. All that information is right there in the market in front of you if you understand how to interpret options data. So why is that the most useful information? Again, it's because the options market is the best information available in the world. Anyone in the world can trade in this market. Where the price ends up going, whether it's the volatility smile, implied volatility itself, or the underlying asset class itself, the price of Bitcoin, it's always settling where the supply and demand meet most closely. Again, people with the deepest pockets who can push the price the most are also the people with the best information. And this is just natural, right? The richest people in the world have the most expensive and the most competent fund managers. The biggest whales and the people with the most money are, are usually the ones dictating where the price goes for these different asset classes. So you don't need to subscribe to anyone's newsletter. <laughs> some random guy who claims to be an expert and points to some made up cherry picked data of their historical success buying and selling stocks. Like you don't have any evidence that they actually had any success. And even if they did, they could just be getting lucky. You can skip all that and, and immediately know what the smartest, richest people in the world think about where the future market will be of that asset class by simply looking at the options market. They've pushed the implied volatility of Bitcoin up because they think it's a very, it's a very risky asset class and they've priced the puts and the calls on the downside and the upside very high. And so that, that that's information I want people to kind of internalize. And to give you a more kind of clear example of what I mean by that, let's talk about election betting odds. There are live markets for things like betting on who's going to become the president of the United States. You'll find that the election betting odds are a better predictor of who's going to win than actual polls taken by news sites and polling companies. And it's the same with Nancy Pelosi, right? Like, or other politicians. They might say in a crisis like COVID, COVID's under control. Uh, we, we don't expect it to spread any further. But then when you watch her personal portfolio, she's buying Pfizer stock. What does that tell you, right? It tells you to watch people's actions, not their words. And it tells you that politicians lie and social media grifters who are trying to sell courses to you lie. Everybody lies, but money never lies. That's what it tells you. And so if you want to know what something should be worth, follow the money. And the way you do that is by understanding how to interpret the options markets. That's where you get the most accurate and efficient pricing data on what something is worth. Ignore all of the talking heads and all these grifters, right? The market has no idea where the price of Bitcoin is going to go. 
There are bull cases and there are bear cases. It's yet to be seen how either will shake out. Bull cases. Oh, this this is digital gold. All central banks are just inflating their fiat currencies. Other countries are adopting it, like El Salvador and institutions are adopting Bitcoin. Yeah, these are all valid bull cases, bull arguments. Bear cases. Well, why why does it have to be Bitcoin? Yeah, sure, there's a fixed number of them, but that can be said about Litecoin or any other like fork Bitcoin. So why have to choose Bitcoin? Just because it's the first mover? You know, like AOL was the first mover with the internet stocks and, you know, they went the way of the dinosaurs. So why, why can't that be true with Bitcoin? You know, there's bear cases too, like that. At least gold is an actual element on the periodic table. You know, you say, oh, you can't, you can't make more Bitcoin. Yeah. But why, why does the world have to choose Bitcoin to be the thing that it assigns value to? Why can't they choose a Litecoin or just some other Bitcoin fork? Every time Bitcoin has a big rally, these grifters come out on social media. They confidently say, follow my uh, newsletter, buy my course and retire early. You'll be financially independent. You know, they're all just like uh, predators just preying on on uh, people who don't understand the nature of financial markets and what financial markets are fundamentally. Financial markets are inherently uncertain. That's why it's a market. Like, do people get that? If people had confidence in where the future price of something was, it would go there instantly if there was any consensus on it. Like the example with the dividends. Markets are very efficient. They don't just kind of drift around mindlessly. All over the world, the 7 billion people trying to find ways to scrape pennies out of inefficiencies in the financial market. So that financial market is just whipping around. It's because the market is telling you that there's no certainty around the future price. That's what a market is. It is inherently uncertain. So yeah, I hope you learned something from that. And let me know if you have any follow-up questions in the comments or if you disagree. All right, take care. Bye.